I'm Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solder gold links in a chain. So far, so we have delicious 22 karat gold. We have some links that we fused shut and we hammered. So we've got this beautiful sort of random thing happening, which I think is very pretty. And this is going to be a relatively straightforward chain in the sense that unlike the ones where we do where there's multiple multiple links all woven it's going to be like a link and another link and a, you know what I mean? just like one within the other and one thing we were talking about before is this is 22 karat it's definitely fusible but it's very tricky to fuse links shut when you've got other things woven through there so although legally we could fuse it we're going to definitely solder it it's just much easier um, if you've ever tried to fuse a link when it's up in the air, it, it doesn't like it very much, in other words. So, and it's not, there's no particular advantage to it. So that's why the ones that we knew we were just going to hammer, we went ahead and fused them. And, but we're going to use solder on this. Okay. So I have two lovely links. So normally when you're putting a chain together like this, you know, two closed and one open, because then you'll put the two closed ones through there. We'll close this up and we'll solder it shut. Now, the only thing I will say is that your seams are not perhaps as tidy as one would wish. <laughs> when I'm cutting thinner links than this, I usually just use my joist gens and I go ahead and fuse or solder, like, you know what I mean? Good to go. But when the links get a little thicker, it starts getting a little dicier. So did you, what did you do to uh, go through these? Uh, the studios? Mm -hmm. I think with these, since the link's a little thinker, a little thinker, dear Lord, <laughs> um, we're gonna, next time if you saw, you'll get a cleaner effect, okay? Yeah. Is it the end of the world? No, but, because all I'm gonna do, I just took this link and I kind of pulled it open a little bit. I'm just gonna file a little bit on both sides to kind of tidy it up. Because remember, it's not about being, you know, that's gonna be perfect, but you need a pretty good joint so that it's not visible later. So normally when you're trying to get something flat, I always brace myself against the table because up in the air, like if there are people that can get things perfectly flat without bracing themselves, I don't know them. So I usually kind of do like this. A lot of people use a bench pin, but as I'm sure you've heard me say a million times, I don't like getting poked in the boobs 300 times a day. So I don't <laughs> use it. I just lean up against the table, but you know, if you like getting poked in the boobs, go right ahead. So I'm just going to give this a few swipes on either side just to kind of even it out. Go. Because the problem is, is the thicker the wire, basically when it cuts, it pinches it. So you get that sort of like a little peak in there. We could also use a wider file, but I just kind of grabbed this little stinker. Okay. So if you, I don't know if you can see that, but it now looks uh, close enough for government work, you know. The goal is good, perfect is a whole other emotional problem. So we have this open, we're gonna slide the two, two through there. I'm going to use your little chain nose pliers and we're going to butt them together. And you know how we were talking earlier about it's very natural, especially in the beginning, to clench, to squeeze, you know, to try, like, I'm trying to get this together to like, so you tighten up. Try to like loosen up, hold your tools just enough that they don't fall out of your hands. Uh, the clenching is very bad for your hands and your wrists, and it isn't good for your jewelry either. So there's zero upside to clenching, okay? So I'm gonna hold the one side, I'm gonna grab this in the other, and I'm gonna kinda go past the seam a little bit, you know, to create a little tension, like so. Let's line it up, Let's see what we've got. Now, another thing you can also do, although this is 22 karat and relatively soft, after you cut these out, it wouldn't be the worst idea to anneal them so that they're a little, like, I, I can get this together, but it, it may fight, it'll fight you a little less if you anneal them. Okay, 
okay, so there's our seam. Is it the most perfect seam in the world? No, but it will serve our purposes. And like I said, you know, that's how I get into all these fussy little things, because as you do this more and more, you learn all the little nuances that just make it easier in the end. But this will, you know, this will work fine. Now, this is a relatively big chain with big links, but the concept holds true. People get freaked out when they're trying to do this because you're worried, right, about melting the other links. The way to avoid that is to work at 90 degrees to your chain in the sense that I'm gonna lay my chain out going across here and I'm gonna solder it like this so that the overflow from my flame isn't hitting my chain. It's only hitting the block. So in other words, how you would mess this up, which you won't, but is to do it like this and like try to get in here and solder. And meanwhile, you're looking at the seam and your torch is heating other links and that's when your other links melt and that's when bad things happen. Instead, we're going to do this. You see that? So like there's the seam right there. And when I point my flame, I'm going to point it just like this. So can I melt anything else? No, because of this position. And that's true even for a little tiny chain. I do the same thing. Okay, so that's the whole key right there that you have to think about like the overflow of your flame, what it's doing when you're busy paying attention to something else. So you have to set it up in a way that it can't do any harm. There's nothing there, okay? So I'm gonna cut uh, a couple little pieces of solder. And normally what I do with something like this, I'm gonna put a tiny little dab of paste flux on here. I'm gonna put that little square on top. Thank you very much, Alana. And that's all it needs. Especially with these high carat golds, like you do not need like to coat everything in flux. It'll just make it too hard to see and it's just not necessary. Now, another way that you can go wrong is that people tend to cut too big of a piece of solder. If you have a lump, you try to clean it up, it sucks, because who wants to do that shit, right? And it never really looks right. So the key, if you it like cut one piece and melt it, if it makes a lump, you know, you know that you need to dial it back. You have to calibrate as you go. You see that little piece there? I'm gonna start with that and I'll do one. And if, if it's a little too small, which I don't think it is, but you know, you can calibrate that way. If you start getting lumps, you need to readjust. Oh no! So lesson of the day, at the beginning of the day when you're about to work, you always wanna put some hot water in your paste flux and stir it up. Cause although it works fine when it's thick, you won't be able to get your stuff off your tweezers. You know, it becomes like glue. So I'm just gonna go real quick, add hot water, and I'll be right back. It, it's um, not something that How long be, will it be like that? Well, you know what? I mean, you're, okay. we'll, we'll deal with it on, So you on see now how we have it, it's kind of nice and sloopy. Like the box somewhere, but it just I, makes I, things I easier. It's okay that. for now. Yeah, because yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a workshop. I don't think okay. it's gonna be tumbling, but good thinking. So I'm just gonna put like a little tiny dab of flux there. And what you can do, you can dry it a little bit and stick your solder on there, or you can just start drying. I mean, your solder may jump off because that's what those little shits like to do. So you have to just be prepared that that's life when you're doing this and have your tweezers always in your hand, ready to deploy. Nice zero tip, that'll do for reaching. Okay, so I'll just dry it a little tiny bit. See what I mean? Can you see that, Alexis? You want to mm -hmm. do a little close-up of that little I baby? Am, I am. I'm zooming You got it. You're yep, zooming I got in. It. Yep. So the important thing is that the solder has to touch both sides of the seam. Because if you've ever had the situation where you set something up like this and you're like, well, it flowed, but it didn't fill. And that's usually because it's only touching on one side. So then it'll like kind of melt and just sit there in a lump and not help you. So that's why I like for this to use the squares because it's a little easier to cover more ground and touch both sides. I mean, the balls also work, but I think this is a little, works a little better. Mm. 
Turn it up a little bit. And I'm gonna point my flame right across like this, just so that I'm heating both sides of the seam. Okay. And it flows. And there's rejoicing throughout the land. And if you notice that seam, like that seam is gonna requ require zero cleanup. And you know, my mission in life is always like zero cleanup, zero cleanup. Like I don't wanna have to touch anything. I wanna touch things as little as possible <laughs> after I've done it. So uh, I will let Alexis come and, and give her like the macro lens and we can like sh sh do a real close up. But literally that's what you do. You just keep adding and like the next one, you'll take an open one, you'll put the end of this in it and one of the other ones, you see what I mean? And you can just keep building them. Okay. okay. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. So there's our seam. Yeah, the macro really helps you. Even if you're not interested, particularly in recording or whatever, just to be able to really see what's happening. Now, remember how I said your seam, if your seam was ever so slightly better butted together, that seam would be even a little more perfect. But honestly, that is a beautiful, tight, clean seam. No one's gonna see it. Everything's gonna be good. Okay, so basically you're gonna keep going with that method throughout. If you have any trouble, obviously give me a yell, but 